everyone. Uh, thanks for joining me today to talk about using AppSec champions to turn your roadmap into a reality, hopefully. Um, my name is Colleen. I've been doing security since 2005, so a little, little while. If you do some math, figure out how old I am. Uh, but recently, I've been focusing on San Francisco startup security. So that means building the programs and the teams needed to get companies ready to go IPO uh, and beyond that to scaling. Um, and at Twilio, most recently, I created the programs from scratch and grew the team from three people uh, to 17. And now I'm trying to do the same thing at Segment. It looks like it's going to work. All right. Um, so just a brief overview of what we're going to cover today. Um, we've got uh, the problem, why do we even need AppSec champions at all? Hopefully, all of you have an AppSec champion program at your work. Um, but maybe it could be revamped. Um, and if you don't have one, I'd, I'd love for you to do one today. Um, and then the key pieces of the plan, everybody's going to do an AppSec program differently, but there should be some key elements that everybody includes which will make it successful. Um, then I'll talk about rewards, because this type of a program is, is making other people do your work for you. So you need to make sure that, since they're not getting paid for it, that there's some reward in it for them. And then fourth, I'm just going to really just wrap up the elements I talked about and then um, move out. Um, just one housekeeping item. I'm going to try something new today. So after the first three segments that are up here, I'm going to give you guys a QA opportunity. So one or two really brief questions. Um, that way, you don't have to save up all of your questions to the very end. Um, I think it would be better for you if you could just ask when it's relevant to you. Um, and if it's going really, really long and it's a great discussion, because we're on a tight time frame and they told me that I need to stay on time. Um, I'll wrap it up, but then I'll catch up with you after, after the session or at five today. So you will, you will get your personalized attention, I promise. OK, why well, have champions? Um, so we can all easily put together a list of companies who should have had very good security. So many things in the headlines, so many things that you've read, and you're just like, dang, how did they how did they mess that up? That's so bad. They have so much money. They have more money than we do for our AppSec program. They should have had effective security. They had great resources, and they should have been able to do good security year over year. It should have been better. And at some point, it should have been, what is that level five optimizing? But these companies, they also have regulatory and customer pressure to be better. So everything's on their side. They have the money. They have the regulatory pressure. And then there's a lot of failure. Why are there a lot of major malfunctions when it comes to AppSec and security in general? Um, my very biased assertion, just being in the industry for a long time and just watching, is I think that there are a lot of companies that over-index on what I call checkbox compliance. You guys know what checkbox compliance is, right? It just looks like the control meets what you're supposed to do. You're, you're fixing the problem for the auditor, but you're not actually raising security for your customers. Um, and that's bad. And then there's under-indexing on, on the day-to-day -day security, the stuff that actually raises the posture. And maybe it's stuff that your auditors don't even notice, but it's stuff that makes your security better, like culture change, making sure that you turn as many employees into champions as possible. Um, and so for this talk, because there's all kinds of problems, I'll just be focusing on AppSec champions. But many of the items here, you can use them for any part of your security program. So if you happen to be a security person who's also in charge of security monitoring, incident response, um, just compliance, um, cloud security, like you can use these things too. OK. I'll start off with the sad slide. Has this ever happened to you? Are your scan results repeatedly ignored? Do developers avoid consulting you and your team before embarking on anything new? and you find out later. Have you failed audits before because AppSec was red flagged? There were problems and deficiencies in that area. Well, um, if so, it could be that the security person over here and everyone else over here model for you is broken. Maybe there's some adjustments needed because you're probably working too hard and you're not getting the wins that you so richly deserve. You're working a lot of hours, you have a lot of burden, and you just don't want any breaches. Stuff goes wrong and you're like, why do I even try? Um, Part of the answer is these developers should actually be helping you roll out and, and make sure your AppSec program sticks. We want more like this, the spa treatments. Um, investing time and effort in your champions is really important because people are a very big security concern. You know that. Everyone knows that. You can um, convert them into being your biggest asset. 
And while for your program, tooling and automation is super important, you want to make things as easy as possible so you reduce human error. But also remember the smarter and faster your engineers are. If they're shipping code multiple times a day um, and they're just moving so fast, they're like, hey, we're in GCP. We were in Amazon, but now we're in GCP. Is that okay? It's like, you got to be able to keep up with them. They will defeat your controls if you don't include them early and as part of your, your solution. So start putting those developers to work. Okay, as I promised, after each one of the sections, it's the brief one to two questions if you have any um, on the why we have security champions. If we don't have any, then we will move on to the next one. Give you a second to think of a question. Um, someone's going to bring a microphone right over to you so you don't have to shout. Basically, my question is... <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> do, do you find that to get good champions in the developer working, in the develop Develop, developer community, do they ha need to have a baseline of, of security training and understanding of security issues first, or can you, can you go in cold and, and enlist, enlist support? There are two types of personalities with that. I would say some people who were fortunate enough as developers to get that type of training in the past, or maybe you've trained them, they're, they're obvious candidates. But then um, I don't know if your company has like a discussion room, a Slack room or something like that where, you know, for the security team and it's open for everyone, people can post articles and say like, hey, I did my training or whatever it is. Um, engineers often accidentally volunteer themselves as a security champion because you might see this engineer that you know doesn't really have any formal security training, but this person's always posting articles like, hey, there was another breach, da 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 da. And it's not their job to necessarily care about that the way that you do. Um, but they basically are taking the first step in volunteering it. And I will get into how to locate and conscript these folks. It's an evil plan. Okay. Okay, so we know we need them. Um, and depending on where you work, there's various levels of support. Maybe your executives do or don't support you. Maybe your engineers do or don't support you. But you know you need to do something. You need to convert people. This is like a religion. So if, if you've ever heard that analogy before, I really believe, believe that security is like a religion. And you, as the religious leader for this security religion, you need to create disciples. Otherwise, you're going to be sad. You're going to be preaching to no one. So part of the job. Um, OK, so key pieces. So there's some prerequisites, and I did say, start putting those developers to work. Before you give someone a job to do, um, you need to have some prerequisites satisfied. So the very first thing you do before you put people to work is, what are you even trying to accomplish? Come up with some sort of a genericized, like these like popsicles, they can be moved around, you can add stuff in there, but it's a good idea to actually give people an idea of, what my program looks like. What am I trying to get done quarter by quarter? You know, what do I want to get done in 2016, 2017? Where do I want security champions to start layering in? Um, but visuals are really spectacular because I think we security people are very good about talking about security and sometimes we're not as good at creating visual aids so that maybe like your executives can take a look at this and go, oh, that's what he's been working on. <laughs> that's what he wants to do. Or you know, your engineers will take a look at it and understand where you want to go. Um, and then a second prerequis prerequisite is you really need to um, make sure that this is budgeted. So have that conversation with your boss and say, hey, I really want to make sure this stuff gets done. I don't want to be the only person toiling on this roadmap for the next, I don't know, five years and just make a little bit of progress. And then when I go on vacation, like everything goes to hell. Forget that. I need this amount of money per quarter or per year so that I can send my developers to conferences so I can buy them t-shirts. Whatever it is, come up with a budget and show your boss how you're going to use it. For the most part, they will give you something. If they don't, there's still something that you can do, but consider if they don't want to give you any money and they have the money, you, you could probably find a better job somewhere else. I'm just saying, you should be treated better as a security person. Um, okay, so then after your, your plan and your budget, you also need something that describes the AppSec champion role, because some places 
don't, you know, AppSec champion, like those are two words that don't go together, or maybe it's three words. Um, so you can create a landing spot for people to go to, and I just made this up, Leaf, so that's why you haven't seen it before. Um, yeah. Uh, so you could say, like, what, what do champions do? What do we want you to do? What will we do for you? What do you get out of it? Just something that people can anchor to. Um, and then the other thing you're going to need is your secret list of champions. So as I mentioned before, there's someone who will always jump into your Slack room and be like, hey, did you hear about the uh, jackpotting that's been happening to ATM machines? And this person's job isn't necessarily security, but this person keeps letting you know that they're interested in security. That's the type of person you put on this list here. Um, and what you want to make sure that you're doing is talk to their boss. Because if Steven is really interested and you've talked to him, um, you know what team he's on, is his manager down for that? How much work are you going to give Steven? Is he already fully committed on all of his sprints? Because if he is, his manager is going to have to say something about that. Um, and then sometimes you'll get a, a yes, but the person can start Q3 later on. And that's fine. All right. So now that you have these prerequisites, um, as your developer, you'll see it gets better. Um, you have your plan, your budget, role description, champions. Um, now you work with the champions and set up biweekly meetings or whatever the cadence is that you want to work with them. So you have this work that you want to push through. If you just sent them that slide with the roadmap and said, we want to do all this stuff this year, but you didn't check in with them, they're not going to get it done, just like anybody else. Um, so. You can even have the champion, the first thing they can do is set up a cadence that works for them so that they can meet with you and report on, hey, security person boss, um, I got this thing done in this last sprint. What, what do you want me to work on next? What's most important? Um, the other thing that you can do when you're meeting with them on a biweekly basis is you can provide that relevant training. So maybe there is, maybe there, you have three JIRA tickets assigned to them. There's three bug fixes that you really want fixed. And they don't have a whole lot of context. And it's someone on their team that needs to fix it. You want to educate this person as best as you can and say, you know, this is why this particular flaw is, is a problem for us. It seems like a systemic problem. All of our dev groups seem to have it. Here's like, you know, here's how you reproduce it. Here's how you fix it. I could do it for you, but it's actually better if you, you know, teach the team to not do this. Um, so yeah, you can provide uh, training and reference material for them. Um, and then the last thing that these meetings are good for is they can give you feedback on how this is working. So just because you've trained them on it and you've given them a whole bunch of work to do for free doesn't mean it's going to go perfectly. So they should come back to you and say, hey, this didn't work out at all, this sprint. Like, we, we totally did not estimate the amount of work that needed to be done. You know, there's all these other dependencies, um, whatever it is, whatever problem they have. Or they can even say, you know what, I'm done. I'm turning in the baton. This extra job is not for me. Can we have someone else be the AppSec champion? Because you need to find that out. Um, and then you can also give them feedback on how things are going, and you can cheer them on, which is good. All right, so that's some starting to work for you. And then they keep working for you, and they keep getting stuff done. So what's exciting is that as a couple quarters go by, you are starting to see the wins stack up. And it's not just you doing the AppSec work. It's us doing the AppSec work together. And so you, know, you're, you, you see your champs grow. They're influencing their teams and others to complete the required reviews. Like That's how you know it's working. They come to you and say, hey, we're going to schedule a threat model because we know we need to do it. And it's been four months since we've done one. And we, if we've changed some stuff, let's do it. So that's a good sign. Um, before they make those ridiculous changes, before they go from AWS to Google Cloud, maybe they'll come to you and say, hey, you know, we're going to make a big change. Um, do you have any requirements before we do that? Can you help us look at the vendor? Any configuration things that we should pay attention to? That's great. Um, you'll also notice your plan is working when you see the JIRA tickets that you've assigned to them. They're actually fixing flaws. They're closing this stuff out. Um, maybe even they're closing them down like closer to the SLA that you want them to. Um, and then the other thing is they're probably pretty excited that there are fewer or no AppSec incidents that wake them up at 2 AM anymore. So. Great things that can happen. OK. Another quick break for um, key pieces of the plan, things that you can do to get your AppSec program working, your CHAMP program. Yes. That's coming next. Ah! <laughs> he was trying to run up here with the microphone and catch you before he said it. Yeah. What was that? No. What about incentives? 
Great question. <laughs> That's coming up next. Awesome. Thank you. Um, any other quick questions before we move on to the rewards? Do you have any uh, specifics for working with developers that might be remote, how to build rapport with people that you don't see in the office every day? Yeah, this one's a particularly tough one for larger companies where your developers are spread out all over the world. Um, nothing can replace like a face-to-face -face type of communication. So if you're not using video chat with your remote developers, you should start doing it. Um, it can be particularly inconvenient for you or for them if the person is more than three hours away. Um, if the person is in, you know, in Europe or if they're in India, like you need to adjust your schedule. Um, my suggestion is to do it um, maybe two times in a row what, on a time frame that's good for them, and then the two times after that, switch it for you. So something that's like a, a morning for you and late for them, and then switch it around. But you got to video chat with them, and then go over it the same way that you would if you were in an in-person meeting, the same agenda. Okay. Yeah. Um, say you're working with uh, a fleet of engineers, multiple hundred, several hundred. Um, how much focus or dedication or resources have you found it to be successful? Um, or how many people do you think you need to be successful, rather, as opposed to doing this in a corner of your desk and you're trying to do other stuff like threat modeling, et cetera, like other work? Yeah, so I think that, um, I know there are a lot of ratios out there, but by um, helping an AppSec champion program myself and then also watching my AppSec leads and engineers doing this work at, at a few different places, I think each AppSec engineer could probably only handle about six maximum champions. Um, but that's not, that's not a terrible thing because each of those six champions, ha that means it's six teams that are covered. And so you don't really want to go beyond that. It's very similar to a management, um, like you don't, your manager shouldn't be managing directly more than six to eight people. So it's a very similar type of model. Um, when you have that big of an organization, I think that you want to make sure that you are making sure that they check in with their team. Like the, the two weeks that you have, like there should be a cascading meeting that they have with the rest of their team, which is like, okay, the security guy wants us to get this, this, and this done. What do you think? We estimated it's going to be that. Um, and then they should be flowing information to and from. Cool. All right. All right. I think that was three. I will go on. Okay. The fun part. Rewards and how to use them. Okay, first of all, has anybody read the book Freakonomics? It's an oldie but a goodie. Yes, yes, Freakonomics. Um, so for me, reading that book and then watching the Champion Program reinforces the assertion that you have to align your incentives with your AppSec program. As well-meaning as people are, and I really believe that most of the developers I've ever worked with, they're smart people and they want to do the right thing. They don't want to be known as that developer with the shitty code that had the problem, it led to the breach. Um, they want to be celebrated just like everyone else does. Um, and so it's one thing to play on that, but then the other thing is they actually are doing more work for you than the average developer is. So this AppSec champion needs some sort of reward. Um, and it, and it's not something that you should take lightly. It should be something that's scheduled. What do I mean by scheduled? So I just broke it down for um, annual, semi-annual, quarterly, and spot awards. The idea is to sprinkle awards to them throughout the year. And those awards could be different sizes, different meanings. Um, and you can have like an annual one or semi-annual one that doesn't cost any money. So we'll say you talk to your, your manager, and, and the manager's like, I'm giving you no money for your AppSec Champion program, because I don't even know what it is. The free stuff you can do is, when it's review time, write a review for this developer. You may get a stack of reviews, but um, that may actually make a difference in this person's bottom line. They could get paid more because of this. Um, the other thing, too, if you have engineering all hands, or, or like your company all hands, get a speaking spot. Give this person a big up. Like, hey, I want to call out somebody here who's been doing a really good job and has been doing it quietly, et cetera, et cetera, kind of thing. Uh, people like that. Um, but if you do have a budget, I would say try taking them to a conference that they'd be interested in. Are they interested in Black Hat or DEF CON or AppSec USA that's coming up in San Jose? Um, or you can give them physical prizes, because if they're like, you know what, no, I'm cool. I really like helping you guys, but I don't want to hang out with a bunch of security geeks. Okay, um, 
you can give them something really obscene and you know, they could put on their desk, you know, something they can carry around and if they go into public transportation, like they have to like jam it in the door. Um, just something that's it's just a very big opulent reminder of you thanking them. Um, and on a quarterly basis, you can do um, you can do some casual lunches. You can take them to meetups. Um, there's security meetups where they can uh, meet other like-minded people, so they're not going to feel alone. They're not going to feel like I'm the only security champion in the whole world doing this job. They'll find you know appsec champions all around, and they'll trade ideas. They'll build community. Um, also, if you have a budget, you can make you know Spreadshirt.com. You can make all kinds of t-shirts for people and you can make it exclusive so the folks that do the work for you, um, they're the only ones who get that beanie, that t-shirt, those socks, whatever it is that you design. Um, and then spot awards are important too because not everything can be on a schedule. We'll say that somebody just did something unexpected and it was awesome and it really helped your bottom line. Um, fidget spinners, stickers, things like that that you can keep at your desk, small amounts of gift cards are helpful. And these just came in. I wanted to show them to you. I wanted to show you how fun stickers are. Not sure why. People like them so much. This one says, I do what security tells me in ransom font. And then <laughs> this one for our back-end engineers, I'm a secure coder, not a designer. And it's written in Comic Sans font. So meaningful. And then this one is security honor student. My scan results are better than yours. So it looks like a... <laughs> parent bumper sticker. And then this one, I designed at my last place, and for some reason it was excessively popular. And it says, security drinks with me because I'm that good. Uh, <laughs> we gave this away to more than just our AppSec champions. So it was fun stuff. And if you're interested, you can go to, there's a site, there's a bunch of them, but I go to makestickers.com, and your developers will love it. OK, um, so that once a year thing, um, if you have a budget, go nuts. Um, this is an actual annual physical reward that I decided on right before um, the big annual engineering all hands at Twilio. I talked to the VP of engineering. I was like, hey, crazy idea. There's one team who's really kicking ass and taking names, and I want to make a big deal of it. Can, will you let me on stage for five minutes to thank them and present them with this? And he was like, that's the best idea ever. Um, and what their, what their change was, they were fixing security bugs within the SLA of our vulnerability management standard. That's something that every group struggled with. They would eventually fix them, but you would check and just be like, this is eight months later. <laughs> what? But these guys were on it. Sometimes they were fixing things within hours that they didn't even have to fix that fast. Um, so imagine this scene. It's engineering all hands. Everybody's had a bit to drink. It's a really crowded hot room, and there's a stage. Manager after manager comes on, and like, yeah, yeah, rah, rah, team. And all of a sudden, we go up there, and I'm hiding this giant thing behind my back. I'm like, hey, I'd like to do a shout out. There's one team that did this, that, and the other thing. And they were just like, what is she doing? And I'm like, and will that team come up here? Um, they were embarrassed. They were elated. Um, they came up to their, you know, came up to the stage. And it was fantastic. The audience went nuts. Uh, people were jealous. Um, and our AppSec program got another boost because they were just like, yes, I am this good. Here's it up close. <laughs> it's actually a replica of Charles V's shield. Um, it's super big. It's heavy. It's impressive. <laughs> and they will love it. And so this is, yeah, <laughs> yes. We'll have to blunt it, though. It's dangerous. We don't want them to hurt themselves. Um, so for stickers, like this one's, this is something that you can give out more often. And again, like this is my last order form. It makes stickers, but it's really cool because they've got some like prefabricated designs that you can go in there and you change the text, the colors, the background, um, the sizing. They they can be a bit expensive if you don't buy a lot of them. But um, the first order will be a little more expensive. But then you'll see which ones people are dying to have. Then you can double don't. You can get a hundred of those or five hundred of those, or depending on how how big your group is. Uh, let's see. Okay, so Q and A on rewards. I have room for one to two quick questions on rewards. If anyone wants to ask them. Oh, okay. I'll provide more of just like an anecdote. So I did something similar to Past Company with a, a Grammy style award for people yes. who were reporting really solid phishing emails. And we called it the Human Firewall Award. And we yeah. made a big deal out of it just as you guys did. And, and like it was hugely successful. So like 
Thumbs up. Yeah. People love to be celebrated. I mean, if you think about the day-to-day -day of everyone's jobs, a lot of it's really mundane. There's a ton of, even if you are sort of rescuing your company here and there, lots of emails, lots of meetings, lots of documentation. It's, it's not as exciting as it could be. But events like this will help the developers associate the security team with something that's extraordinary. Um, and that's what you want to do, if you can. Maybe I'm just being cynical, but have you had a problem or challenge with uh, reward creep? Last year I gave a shield. This year I've got to give a trebuchet or something. <laughs> uh, you know, and then it's going to be a condo or something yeah, like that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, because you know, people try to one up each other and like, oh, well, I got the ten dollars subway gift card last month for doing all that work, and that was great. But I just don't have the time for this, et cetera, et cetera. Just, just curious. Um, yeah, I think that's why. Depending on your crew as well. I mean, it, every every group of people is different. We all create our different cultures where we work. Um, but I'm, I'm no longer at Twilio, but one of the uh, security team members contacted me and they're like, hey, where did you buy that shield? We're going to do that again for the annual all hands. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Here's my you know order stuff from Amazon. And they there's like a million of them all within the same price. So they just bought another one from a different king. Um, so it's like collect... <laughs> Charles Fifth, exactly, limited edition. Um, so that was, that was about 80, 75, 80 bucks. Um, I feel like that was a very reasonable price for an annual award. And we got lucky on that one. If, if that person had said, hey, I want to do the full Black Hat conference, you know, it's five or $6,000, I would say, hey, don't you, don't you want a shield from... <laughs> I'll get you two shields. <sighs> okay. Um, any other questions or comments or thoughts on rewards? Because it's the most fun part. Okay. All right, home stretch. And um, so that I am courteous to the next group of people, if we end up going long for whatever reason or we get close to that mark, um, if you want to have a longer discussion with me about any of this stuff, you want to brainstorm or complain about some part of my speech, whatever it is, um, you can meet me in the hallway or I'll be here tonight. Um, I definitely will want to chat with you. Okay, wrapping up. Um, so the last piece of it here really is just as a rem reminder, because I, I know I talk a lot, I covered a lot of stuff, I showed you lots of pictures, but it really comes down to um, a few things that you need to have. Remember that budgeted roadmap. So things you want to do, how much your manager is going to let you spend on recruiting other people to do your work for you, because that's what it is. Um, and then, of course, within your roadmap, there's a bunch of automation and tools and processes and things that you want to implement. Those are very important. Um, and then while you're doing all this, figure out who your champs are. Like, sift that sand. Who's the person who's coming to you and saying, um, security team, well, I don't want to say anything, but this other person is doing blah, 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 and they have this on their laptop. Um, we get that all the time. Uh, it's really strange. If we had to put money on predicting who would be our security champions and who would actually give us problems, we wouldn't know. There are some people who are, we, we call them YOLO developers, and they're the people that we're afraid of. They're going to do crazy stuff. Um, they've actually opted into the most security activities. Um, and then the other folks that we think are fine, upstanding citizens, very careful and responsible, um, they'll kick back on the smallest things. Um, so I would say go into it with an open mind because you don't, you don't know who your champions are and you don't know who your troublemakers are. All right. Um, and then the second thing is make sure you know what work is required on both sides. So remember that pre-work that you need to do. Um, remember that they need spot training. So every couple of weeks when you meet with them, make sure that you're giving them relevant information. If there's a bunch of CSRF vulnerabilities that keep popping up, show them what that is. <laughs> hey, let's go first to the wiki page and see what that's all about. Let's talk about how to prevent it. Let's talk about you know all these different things. And then when the person finally gets it, then you're like, OK. And then there are two tickets, which I'm assigning to your team, that need to get done. Do you think you feel comfortable communicating this to the rest of your team and flowing the information back on how it's going? Um, so they're doing the work. Um, also be available for them, too. So if they're, they're like, yes, boss, I got it. I'm happy to do what the security team tells me. Um, I got the sticker that says, I do what the security team tells me. I'm doing it. And in the middle of it, they might get a bit lost. So they need to be able to Slack you or whatever your messaging app is, contact you, walk, to, walk over and say, hey, it's going sideways. Can you come over and help me? So you may have um, 
a bit of that extra mentoring. I would recommend making sure in your own sprint, when you commit to doing things, try not to overcommit on the security deliverables that you're going to do. Because when you have a champions program, you need a little bit of extra space in your schedule so that you can do this mentoring with them. And remember, sprinkle in different types of rewards throughout the year. The rewards don't actually have to cost anything. Um, probably the most meaningful ones are recognition. People like to be acknowledged for the work that they do, especially if it's in front of a lot of people. Okay, and part of the wrap up too, um, I wanted to point out some positive outcomes. This is not all theoretical. I, I've done this at a couple companies. And um, aside from getting your work done and from passing ISO, there are other things that happen that will make you believe that this actually is a good thing and it works. Um, my last week or so at Twilio, um, when word got out I was leaving, I tried to keep it really quiet because my boss was like, it'll destabilize the place if you tell people you're leaving. I'm like, I should tell people I'm leaving so they don't depend on me a month from now. Um, and then I got some text messages and stuff. Um, you know, we do this for you. So one outcome of the thriving AppSec Champion program is that devs are really invested in your program. They don't want to let you down. They don't want you to leave. Um, they make progress on your roadmap. Even if you were to take a two-week vacation, you can trust them to probably get things done. It might slow a bit. When you're not in the room, they'll speak up for you. They'll speak up for your team and what you want to get done. Your disciples. And here's another one. It's a Slack message. I try to, hopefully I blacked everything out because it's going to be, <laughs> this is going to be recorded. Uh, but this person, this lovely person here, um, on both of those messages, really the, the pink arrows point to like the areas where I was just like, wow, there's some real culture change here. Um, those two developers on that side and this slide, they were the most outspoken, very outspoken, well-respected tech leads in R&D. They were the law. What they say went. Um, they were very vocal during hi the hiring process. They were very vocal during sprint planning. They were just very vocal during the day. There was lots of yelling and screaming. They got their way. So when I first came, here and saw that, it scared me because I thought, oh, for sure, these are the people that are just going to destroy me and there's going to be no AppSec done here at all. Um, and in fact, when I first met with them, and it was like 2014, both of them were totally not on board with AppSec. <laughs> they had bad experiences with um, previous people and they just didn't, they were just like, how about you just do your thing and we do ours. Um, but after using basically most of the techniques in this talk, and I'm happy to say like a couple of stickers a piece, um, I'm happy to count them as converted AppSec champions, and I'm still in touch with both of them, um, even though we've all gone to do different things. Um, so yeah, that's me. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going for a clean wrap up here, uh, which means that I'm happy to, you know, I can take maybe one more question if you'd like, or if you have some ideas and brainstorming, we can walk out and talk about it. Um, connect with me and let me know how these techniques have worked for you or haven't worked for you. Um, because I don't know everything about this. You know, it's for me, it's an ongoing experiment. Um, and I like helping. Um, and I'd love to have your point of view on, on any of these ideas. It's really helpful. So not only do I like helping, I also like hiring. So the one plug I will put in here is, I'm looking for a stellar AppSec lead. In case you know anyone. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone.